Hey guys, Wet Movie One back here again for another Blu-ray DVD update. It's been a week since the last one I've done. I got a bunch of stuff since then, so I just wanted to do this one now. Uh, so let's start this one off with Paranormal Activity Four. This one was just released, and uh, I just had I just had to get it. I, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the franchise. I've done I've done a review on this one before when I saw it in the movie theater. So I'm not really gonna get in depth on the movie itself. But this one is the Blu-ray DVD digital copy combo pack. This is the unrated version. It has the unrated and it has the uh, theatrical version on here, and which is only like well, like ten minutes longer, eight or nine, like eight to ten minutes longer, with like one or two different little things at the beginning of the movie. Some of some of some little things scattered throughout, but the main thing is uh, like at the beginning of the movie on the unrated version, uh, you see you see like the uh, the girl of the movie and her friends going out trick or treating. And just like a little thing happens. It's kind of stupid, but that's one of the things that's extended in this movie. But also, as a special feature here, you get uh, 30 minutes of, uh, you know, found footage not shown in theaters, which is pretty much deleted scenes. And, uh, which is kind of whatever, you know, kind of whatever. Nothing super special happens in them. There's a couple of scenes where you see, like, uh, her friends coming over, like, playing hide-and-go-seek in the house. And, you know, just, you know, creepy stuff's happening just a little bit. But when you, when you watch the deleted scenes or the uncovered files it's just pretty much deleted scenes but if you're a fan of the franchise I suggest checking this one out I would say the first and the third are my favorite uh, second and fourth are the kind of the weakest ones of the four that they have and the one thing that kind of annoys me a little bit is when uh, the other three came out they all have spines like this right the black spines black spines with the red lettering this one has white spine with a uh, red lettering it just kind of throws off the collection a little bit the way it looks but eh, it doesn't matter maybe that's just the way they're going to start off the other friend you know the other si i think they're going to do two more of these i think i'm not sure but I i'm a fan of it i know i know they're not like you know great extravagant movies or anything they're just low budget fun movies to watch uh next up right here from warner brothers uh is cabaret uh starring liza minnelli uh this is this is one came back came out in 1972 i believe give or take a year um, it takes place at the ki at this Kit Kat club, which is like a burlesque uh, club, uh, back in Berlin in 1930. And it just follows Liza Minnelli's character around with uh, Michael York. Uh, they have this relationship together, and uh, it just pretty it just pretty much uh, uh, follows the, the you know two characters falling in love with each other, and uh, following her life inside the Kit Kat club, being a burlesque dancer back then. It's kind of hard to explain this movie because I don't want to ruin it for you. And uh, this this Blu-ray um, has two special, uh, two behind the scenes special featurettes on here, theatrical trailers, commentary on it. And uh, if you guys didn't know, the year that uh, this one, this, this one was also nominated for uh, eight or nine Academy Awards. Uh, I think I believe ten, but it won eight Academy Awards. But it went up against The Godfather the year this came out. Um, so like you were looking, you'd be watching, going, hmm, who's gonna win? You know, everyone was was, was gonna choose the Godfather. Godfather was also nominated for ten Academy Awards the same year as this, but the Godfather won three. This won eight. So that that sh that just kind of shows you that this is not just a movie to forget about, you know. And of course, Bob Fosse is the director of this, a famous dance choreographer and director. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, the story kind of me meanders a little bit for me. It's all about the musical sequences. Um, the reason I wanted to see this movie again after all these years is because my mom was in a play called Golden Encore at this college and uh, she was part of this production and I was there recording it and shooting it and that's when I fell in love with the music from this show and uh, yeah, th I, I, you guys all know me and I just love, the, I just love musicals and this is uh, one I really highly suggest for the musical sequences. The story kind of meanders a little bit for me but the, the musical stuff is just amazing. Uh, next up right here from Disney is the, the Diamond Edition of uh, Peter Pan. Oh man, this is one of my all-time favorite Disney movies next to like Little Mermaid and Jungle Book and Sword in the Stone, which are on my you know top five list right there. But uh, this is the Diamond Edition. You get the Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy. Um, you guys all know the story about Peter Pan. I really don't need to get into the story, you know, about kids going to Neverland, never wanting to grow up and fighting Captain Hook, <laughs> you know. But this uh, Blu-ray right here, you get all the same special features you guys uh, you got on the original DVD release of Peter Pan. Also, you get two deleted scenes and two deleted songs from the movie that they never, they never you know, of course, they never put in it. And I thought that was just an amazing thing. And the picture quality 
is so much better than the DVD version that you know that we all have known and love for years. It, it's a it's a total recommend upgrade, a total upgrade for me. And a lot of you guys out there, if you guys are fans of Peter Pan of this movie, you would t totally dig the picture quality on this one. It's just a really beautiful addition, and it also has the trailer for the 3D uh, release of The Little Mermaid that's coming out, and I think it's spring, or for, I, I forgot now, it's coming out real soon this year, so it'd be kind of cool to get, you know, to get see that one when it comes out in theaters. I, I think it's coming to theaters, but I'm not quite sure, but that's the diamond edition of Peter Pan on Blu-ray, fantastic, looks amazing. Uh, next up right here is from Kino, and that is Bela Lugosi and White Zombie. And this, this movie is kind of hard to ex it's, it's not really hard to explain. There's just not really much plot going on. It's about this couple that um, that love each other, and they go to this castle, and Bela Lugosi's there and turns one of them into a zombie. And you know, it's just you know the guy trying to figure out what's going on. It's 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 it's, it's fun. It's one of the original zombie movies. Like I totally can see George Romero watching this, going, you know what? I want Night of Living Dead because I believe this was like the legit first movie to ever use the word zombie in a movie, and uh, also with this movie right here, it um, was all, was the movie that Bela Lugosi did right after Dracula. You know what I mean? He was trying to figure out what movie role to pick after he picked like the you know the biggest one that he could, and then he went straight to White Zombie, and that did, I don't know, man. In this movie, Bela Lugosi is just kind of um, really. I don't know, like, every time he would talk or do something, really, he's always really dramatic, you know what I mean? Like, you come here, you know, like, with big dramatic, you know, the way he speaks and the way he moves his hands, and I just, I just like, I just, he's really, he's, he's just a total cheese fest to watch, but, I, don't get me wrong, I love Bela Lugosi, but it's just one of those things, he just totally, just overacts the hell out of himself in this one, and it's just really, really fun to watch, and just all the zombie characters, the way they have the zombies look in this movie is really cool. It's only about like 64 minutes long, really, really cool, really a good look into the early like, zombie movie, you know? Alright guys, and the next one up is from Sony, and that is Here Comes the Boom, Ready or Not, starring Kevin James, but it's not called Ready or Not, it's just called Here Comes the Boom, but uh, it's pretty much uh, the story of a teacher. Uh, it's always kind of slacking off, showing up to, you know, the school late. One day, he uh, gets caught by the principal of the school saying, you know, you're late, I'm going to dock you one day pay. So he's just like, oh, man, damn, you know. And the, and the principal has to put him on, like, you know, uh, some some duty somewhere outside the, you know, outside of the school, like, you know, crosswalk duty kind of thing or something. You know, he ends up going to the, the, the music teacher to see if he can, like, you know, talk to the music teacher to get him you know, to do the job for him. He finds out that the music teacher uh, just found out that he's having a baby and he's like, he's an older gentleman, you know, and uh, later on that day, uh, he's in the teacher's meeting and then they're finding out that they have to do school cuts and uh, one of the programs they're gonna cut is the music class and, you know, Kevin James is like, oh man, you know, the music teacher is just a really nice guy and he's just having a kid. He's just about to get his tenure and they're gonna, they're gonna cut the program at the end of the semester or end of the year or whatever. And then Kevin James kind of speaks up for him and then he ends up trying to like make, you know, uh, do anything he can to make money to help keep the music program alive and going. So he, ends up, he uh, ends up going to a friend's house one night just to hang out to watch some MMA fighting. And then his friends are like, hey, you should do it. You know, and then he actually kind of does and he tries to, uh, uh, you know, keep go doing these fights to make these little, you know, little bit of money at a time to try to get that money to keep the, you know, the music uh, program in the school alive, and that's pretty much the story of the movie. I found it to be uh, pretty funny, but I, w I would expect a movie like this about MMA fighting to have maybe be PG-13. You know what I mean? This is this is rated PG and it's put out, you know, it's made by um, Happy Madison, you know, the Adam Sandler company, and it's just one of those ones that. I don't know, I, I wish they would have made it PG-13 so they could maybe say a couple of different words or do a couple things a little bit differently. But it still was a fun watch. It has a gag reel, which was pretty funny. If, if you guys are into Kevin James movies like Mall Cop and Zookeeper, it's in the same vein as that, like fa family friendly. I, I, I suggest checking it out because I dig Kevin James' style. Um, yeah, it's totally worth the rental. I, I dug it. Alright guys, and the next one up is Celeste and Jesse Forever. I, I kind of like this movie. It's uh, pretty much about two high school sweethearts that just love and adore each other ever since high school. 
And uh, now they're in their 30s, and one of them is a successful person on television. The other one's kind of, un Jesse's unemployed, and he's just sort of like, you know, not knowing what he's doing with himself. And uh, they they kind of are, are drifting apart a little bit. So they, they're going through a divorce in this movie, and but they still really, really love each other. Jesse lives in like, the house next door. You know, they live right next door to each other. They just always love, they really love each other. You can see it in the, in the movie, in their relationship. But they're going through this divorce at the same time, which is kind of weird. And uh, they, they're, they're date, you know, they're dating people. And each time they someone, one of the others dating each other or dating someone else, they're always like, "What's going on? Why are you dating that person?" You know what I mean? Like you, you can see that they're totally in love, but you just, you, you just can't really see why they're divorcing each other. It's kind of really strange of what's, what's going on in this movie. But it's really wonderfully told. When you, watch, when you guys watch it, you'll be like, oh my god, this was a, you know, an amazing uh, little love story movie. It stars Elijah Wood, Emma Roberts, Andy Samberg. It's, it's, it's just a wonderful relationship movie. You know what I mean? If you're all into like your feelings and emotions, it's one of those ones you, sh you should check out. Uh, same thing with this one right here, and that's Nobody Walks. Uh, this one's a story of a, a, sound, a sound editor uh, working in Hollywood. He's about to get his big break and do his first big movie, but he's taking on this one last project uh, before he does his big, his big movie. And uh, this one girl comes from New York uh, to, you know, get her little artsy-fartsy movie, uh, you know, worked on, and he's going to do it for her. In the meantime, this guy, he has his family and his kids and everything, and when, when she comes along, he kind of falls in love with her. And it just kind of shows how one person can change Everybody's, you know, how how one 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 moment in life can change a lot of people's lives, and I just found this movie to be really, really lovely. And if you guys get a chance to see this one, it's a high, it's a high rental for me. I, I I thought it was just absolutely lovely the way they shot it. The, this everything about this movie was just beautiful. All right, guys. Next up is Jack and Diane. It's a story about two lonely women that live in New York. Uh, they, they meet by chance when uh, Diane walks into a, a, a store that uh, Jack is uh, working in and uh, they form they kind of form this little relationship and then they go out on the town they have fun they drink they party they do drugs you know throw up in alleys together hold each other's hair back kind of thing and then when the when the relationship, when the relationship goes uh, that extra mile um, one of them just has like this weird nightmare and they just, you know, they're just kind of confused of what's going on with, 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 with what they're actually doing, you know. And uh, it's really kind of strange how to explain this movie because, to be honest, I kind of not sure if I understood it correctly when I watched it. It's kind of like uh, when you watch it right at the beginning of the movie, you see a werewolf, you know what I mean, in the, in the, in the mirror or something. And you're kind of like, what's going on here, you know, but... To me, I don't know if this was a werewolf movie, if the symbolism of a werewolf was like the beast within the person, you know, like the, you know, the inner demon inside of a person, or if the per people or the person was really a werewolf. You know what I mean? If you watch this movie, I'm sorry if I ruined anything. I really didn't because you see it at the, right at the beginning of the movie, within like 10 seconds of the beginning of the movie. And it just it was really kind of confusing to me. It was really um, wonderfully shot, really really wonderful scenery in this movie um I, I did like what I was watching it's just that I didn't get the whole thing that they were trying to go with I liked it but it wasn't I don't know it's just kind of really confusing to me a little bit next up right here from MPI is uh Why Stop Now starring Jesse Eisenberg Melissa Leo and Tracy Morgan um it's a, it's a real it's a real simple story but I absolutely uh fell in love with it I've been recommending it to people at my work the last couple days um, it's pretty much a story about Jesse Eisenberg. He's trying to get to this audition at, at this school because he's a, he's a pianist. And he's trying to, you know, better himself by going to this audition, doing well so he can go to college. But in the meantime, the night before that audition, he, he, he gets all drunk at this party. But then in the, when he wakes up the morning, of the morning of the audition, he has to take his mom, who is a drug addict, a drug abuser, to rehab. And it's the whole time of him trying to get her to rehab, get her, get his sister to school. But as uh, Jesse Eisenberg takes his mom to rehab, the people at rehab say her, 
her, her urine is clean and she has to go out to get high to get into rehab. And it was kind of like, what? You know? So Jesse Eisenberg has to go get his mom high to get her into the rehab place. It was just kind of, whoa, what's, you know? But in the meantime, with her, with him trying to get his, his own mom high, he, they bump into um, Tracy Morgan's character, which is the drug dealer of the town. And um, J Jesse Eisenberg's mom owes Tracy Morgan money. So it's a whole thing when Jesse Eisenberg gets caught up in this whole drug game and has to do stuff for Tracy Morgan. It's just a really, really fun movie about pretty much Jesse Eisenberg trying to get to that audition and doing well, you know. I absolutely love this movie. Really, really funny. Really, You know, it has, has a nice tone of dramatic and a nice undertone of comedy with Tracy Morgan and some of the other things that are happening in this movie. I, I really, really love this movie. And this one right here has a Tracy Morgan interview featurette and a trailer on this thing and um, if you guys if you guys do get a chance I highly highly recommend it just about a kid trying to get to his audition man <laughs> you know uh, next up right here is a uh, yelling to the sky um, this one stars the the girl from precious and she's only in it for like a few minutes in the movie you know probably like 10 minutes throughout the whole movie but the whole the whole story is just about these two sisters living in an abusive household where, where her you know the dad comes in all the time drunk and slapping him around beating him up, beating him or beating him up and then when they they leave the house to go to school they get beat up by like the town bullies and stuff too so wherever they go they're getting smacked around and beat up all the time and it's just pretty much a story about these two sisters trying to do anything they can to get out of that environment you know, but it's done in such an artful way that I absolutely fell in love with this one. Gabby Asibia, you know, the girl from Precious, and she was in Tower Heist. You know, the girl the girl in Precious that's always going to beat up, she actually plays Precious. Um, she plays like a complete 180 in this movie than she did in Precious, because she's always getting her, her butt kicked in the other movie. Now in this one, she's doing the butt kicking, you know, as the, the, like the town bully. And I thought she did a very good job in this movie, the leading actress of this movie did a, a really really good job in this movie but it's just a wonderful uh, told story if you guys get a chance to check it out I really highly recommend Yelling to the Sky very 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 well done uh, next up right here I got it Best Buy for the trade and save and that I just had to because it's one of those ones I wanted to see when it, when it first came out WWE the Attitude Era um, it has a, it's a, about a 60 minute documentary about the Attitude Era, they had a couple of wrestlers, you know, sitting around talking about the Attitude Era. It's not like a one of the best documentaries they ever ever done, but it's really it's it's really enjoyable. They go through a lot of the Attitude Era itself, the DX, and how they always had women asking them to take their tops off, and just a whole bunch of different things like Stone Cold, The Rock, and how you know the Attitude Era kind of you know uh, crushed the WCW in a way, and also that has a bunch of like highlights. Uh, from the Attitude Era, like on the second disc and some on the first disc and stuff. It's, it's, it's enjoyable, but it's not one of the best uh, WWE documentaries i ever seen. It's worth watching, though, if you're a fan of wrestling. Next up here from Inception Media Group is Ghost Trap. Um, it's, 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 it's a family movie. It's an it's a independent, low-budget family movie. Um, it starts off with this, this one girl testing out her, uh, her science project for class because her science teacher said, you got to get your science class... Uh, you know, a science uh, project ready, and it's like a rocket. She lets it go. She has to go up, and it kind of causes this whole big, uh, you know, mess up in the town. Like it, you know, breaks things, and it all of a sudden hits this old lady. This old lady falls, she, and everyone thinks this old lady at this house is like a witch. You know what I mean? Like a weird lady. No one wants to go in her spooky house. So uh, when her rocket um, hurts this lady, this girl has to go do community service at this lady's house which she thinks is haunted and when you when she goes into the house you see that it is haunted and weird stuff is going on she's like conjuring up things she has like spirits hanging around her it, it's a very fun um very fun uh, low budget family movie it's I, I can't say it's for everybody but i did enjoy myself for the cheesiness, cheesiness factor of it like when you see like a person almost get hit by a car at the beginning of the movie but the car is nowhere near the person that's going to get hit by the car it's just, you know, one of those things like, you see like, oh no, Timmy, watch out. You know, and they, 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 they pull the person off the street, but the car is like 10 feet, 15 feet away from the person. But you know, they just didn't have the money. They didn't want to hurt anybody for real. But it was just kind of fun with the cheesiness factor of it. If you guys are into like little uh, independent ghost movies, it was kind of fun. And next up right here is uh, The Origins of Oz. 
It's a documentary about the Wizard of Oz and L. Frank Baum, and uh, it's pretty much a documentary about L. Frank Baum and how he created the Wizard of Oz. You know, the book series and then the movie. They even show clips um, from the Wizard of Oz in here, and they have family members like uh, L. Frank Baum's like granddaughters and grandsons, I believe, talking about uh, their grandpa or grand, you know, great grandpa. It's one of those documentaries when I was watching it. It's only about like 45 minutes long. But it felt like it was one of those ones that I've, uh, it was on like the, the Blu-ray version of um, The Wizard of Oz. Like one of those doc you know, documentaries that you would see on there. It just kind of felt like something I've seen before. Yeah, but, but it is worth checking out if you guys are a big Wizard of Oz fan. I'm just not exactly sure because I didn't go check that uh, Wizard of Oz uh, collector's, collecting bo collector's box I have. Sorry, I can't even speak right. It's like 4.30 in the morning. Collector's box I have to see if this documentary is actually on there. Uh, next, the last up right here is uh, Who Did I Marry, which is like a Tyler Perry, it's a play, but it's in the vein of like uh, the Tyler Perry plays, like Why Did I Get Married and all that kind of stuff, but it stars the guy that played uh, Tommy in The Martin Show, so I'm like, oh, I want to see this one, I always liked that guy, he was cool, like Tommy and Cole from The Martin Show kind of thing, but you get Tommy in there, it's just really weird because there's no audience reaction, like they filmed it, they did the, they did the play on the stage, but they didn't have any audience there, so no reaction. But they would play it up and overreact, like, you know, when they when they're trying to say something funny and do like a big punchline to something. They're like, ha ha, huh. you know, but no laughing because there's no audience there. It's just kind of strange. It's just how uh, some people cheat, uh, like how a guy cheats on his wife, and then how he's trying to keep it a secret, and then how other family members find out. That's pretty much the play. It's only about like. Well, like 70 minutes? Yeah, 70 minutes long. It, it's okay if you see it out there and you're, and you're into those uh, Tyler Perry kind of plays. You know, the over-the-top, just, <laughs> you know, kind of plays. You'll, you'll dig this one. But uh, thanks, guys, for coming by for my Blu-ray DVD update today. And uh, make sure you guys thumbs up this video and share it around on Facebook and Twitter. And I'll see you guys all next time.